and welcome to a very special Analog Toys live stream. Um, I've got a, a few of my good friends who I'm going to be, you know, they're going to be collaborating with us in our, during our Conicon. We're also going to be collaborating on my next episode of Toy Histories, which is going to be the history of Kenner's Mask. And we really felt like it would be a good opportunity for us to jump in together on, on a live stream and, and discuss collecting mask in the modern day. So um, I'm fortunate enough to have the entire crew from Chasing 80s Toys. Now, I think the last time I had Chasing 80s Toys on the channel, it was one man. It was Mr. Chris Mila. How are you, Chris? <laughs> Hello there. How are you? Good to be here. That's um absolute pleasure to, to have you here. And yeah, the, your, your channel, uh, well, the crew certainly has... Um, has grown. So next I'm going to bring in a man. You all know him. You all love him. And I am a little bit worried about the chat tonight because he's not moderating. It's Mr. Scuba Pete. <laughs> hey, hey, how are you? Good, good, good. Cheers, Scuba. Cheers. I'm on, I'm on the tee because it's very, very early where I am. It's very early. And last but certainly not least, Mr. Jeff Barker. Hey, I know that guy. Cheers, everybody. <laughs> who, who messaged me yesterday and put me in a really, really good mood. Do you, Jeff, do you, do you want to announce to everyone how well you made me so happy yesterday? Uh, I had decided a month or so or two ago that I was not going to go to Joe Fest because of some financial reasons and, and just, you know, taxes and all that kind of stuff. Had a, had some things come up that I had to pay for and... I was kind of mopey about it, and my wife woke up the other morning and said, you need to go to that uh, because you're probably not going to get a chance for a long, long time ever to see Tony, and you need to see Pete, and you need to see Mr. Schaefer and everybody else, Retro Blasting, and all those guys that are going to be there and go to the meetup. So I am going to – I booked my flight, booked my hotel, booked my car, and going to the final day of Joe Fest and going to go to the Retro Blasting meetup, and oh, yeah. we're going to – we're going to have some fun. Awesome. Yeah, what, it's so cool. I can't sight. The only thing we're missing is that Chris. handsome man in the top right corner there. But yes, right. I totally understand, Chris. It's, you know, when you're talking about international travel, um, yeah, oh, it certainly, certainly cost me an arm and a leg. But um, <laughs> Kickstarter. Oh, oh, oh. And we have our first super chat <laughs> of the night. And um, <laughs> anyone know this guy? I've heard of him. Jody, he's at just does. Is he? Isn't that that Belgium? Uh, <laughs> Belgium now? Oh, 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 Jody, Dutch. it's that guy that works too much these days. I always <laughs> used to accuse him of being Swedish. <laughs> Swedish. <laughs> yeah. Jody. Um, but, but before we get into the kind of meat and potatoes of tonight's topic, mm. um. For anyone in, in the audience here who isn't aware of your channel, it's had a very slight rebranding of late. Um, so I wanted you to give you guys the opportunity to kind of tell us what your channel is all about um, and what each of you kind of does for the channel. So we'll start with Chris as the founder of Chasing 80s Toys. The name is a little bit longer now. Chasing 80s Toys, Music and Cosplay. Is that right? Yeah, when Chasing yeah. 80s Toys, well, when the YouTube channel started before COVID, it was only cosplay and music. Then COVID hit, so I couldn't do nothing with those two passions of mine. Uh, then I started doing my third passion, the toys. And since the country has opened up again, uh, music and cosplay and events are back on the menu again. So uh, we're bringing back more of that content. So it's... Uh, a very diverse menu we have for you on Chasing 80s Toys. And, of course, uh, we have Jeff and Pete now uh, with us for a while. So uh, the family only grows, and so does the fun. <laughs> Don't let him kid you. He just, he's like shooting hot girls and cosplay. Oh, yeah. And, you know, those, you know, they're nice videos. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and Jeff, you recently did a bit of a, uh, I think you called it like a quick shot video where you talked about the G.I. Joe Tomahawk. Yeah, um, we're trying to do just some short takes. I mean, the, the toy review stuff for all of our favorite, you know, toys have, have been done so much. We just kind of want to do some little quick refresher shorts and just give a little take on 
what we liked about them and, and kind of where we're at with our collection with them and just kind of do a quick little review and what we thought about them. So they're, they're, they're kind of just nice little droplets that um, mm -hmm. I think are easy di to digest. I just, I just sent Chris one uh, last night actually for uh, Takara <laughs> yeah, Joe stuff, you know, a little teaser for that. Nice. And uh, yeah. I think that's going to be kind of a cool little thing for us to do. Nice. And I, I was going to ask you how you, how you filmed that Tom, because I already, I already enjoyed that little, that little, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> a very easy to consume video, but it was it's, it's so short and fun and and a and a toy that I'm very fond of. I've got my tomahawk just up up here mm -hmm. on the top yeah. of the hill. Um, I was very curious because you know, like, how did how did you get the? You, it was revolving. This little guy right here. I, I actually kind of been looking for this pedestal. You know, I want to class things up with a little uh, <laughs> little uh, little Doric or Ionic con column there, Roman column, and uh, mm -hmm. found a little rotisserie. Uh, thing not rotisserie chicken but just a rotating thing on uh on amazon and kind of been trying to get my setup right and i don't know we'll, we'll see if it works but i i do love how that, that turned out and uh yeah that that tomahawk was the last big joe vehicle i ever got as a kid and i always wanted to get it back and finally got one yeah. good and complete and finished him out so it's been fun to film that stuff this way yeah he's really uh starting to class it up Doric <laughs> columns his chair now has rich corinthian leather Mahogany, you know. <laughs> 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 leather bound yeah, books. Yeah, show your leather bound books. <laughs> but, but for those of you in the chat, literally like two minutes before we started the stream, Jeff was managing to knock everything off. That that's why I asked the question. I was like, he started touching it. We're, we're yeah. going to use this thing. We're going. That, that piranha's going to go flying again. Oh, <laughs> I left yeah. it undone so that if it, if I hit it again, it's just going to we'll go again. Versus shoot. <laughs> God. Um, Master Sun 42, thank you very much for the super chat. He says, uh, looks like about 65% of my toy collector heroes in one location. Love the mask. Respect. That's awesome. Very kind. That is awesome. I love yeah, this. I love this. Sitting there trying to figure out who's the other 35%. I, I love it. <laughs> I love the specificity of the 65%. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Jody, uh, thank you. Oh, for <laughs> as as oh, the rebrand now include as the rebrand now includes cosplay, when will we see, we see Barker and Scuba in cosplay? I don't see it for myself. I unless I can, you know, this body will not fit into a stormtrooper outfit. And until that happens, you probably won't see me in cosplay. <laughs> Look, I, I I think there might be a bit of cosplay going on on the Sunday night of Joe Fest, but there will be no photography allowed. That's just a, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Put your put your phone in the basket <laughs> <laughs> with your keys. <laughs> well, I really wanted to, to kick off this conversation about collecting mass toys in, in the modern day with. We've seen a lot of brand resurgence from 80s toy lines, even things, you know, um, some of the more obscure toy lines like um, Centurions. Mm. Okay, they're not called Centurions, but we're seeing ramen toys do a, um, a very faithful kind of um, modern take on Centurions. A lot of brands are coming back. We haven't seen Mask return yet. Do we think... It's possible it may return. Maybe we do. I, yes. I, I think I think uh, I wish the, it would. I think the big corporations are starting to, are trying to dredge up so many intellectual properties that they can. That this one is, it's not a it's not a first tier one like a Joe thing or something like that. But I think it's right there, and it, I think it could yeah. get redone. Do, mm -hmm. do you do you think modern toy companies are gonna? If, if, if they were to reintrodu reintroduce it, what do you think it would look like? Would it be in the same scale? Um, I don't bigger, think so. Bigger. You the, think the be bigger? Bad, maybe yeah. bigger. The bad thing about it is the, the strength of the mask line, and I shouldn't be talking because I'm not a huge mask collector. These guys are. <laughs> but to me, the strength of the mask line is the vehicles mm -hmm. and the, the engineering behind the vehicles. Oh. And it, it drives the scale of these guys a little bit. And I think if they went to like a six-inch scale, they, they wouldn't be able to do this the way they do. Yeah. 
I, no, I, I, absolutely. I, I had I've, I've had a few people over, um, so over the years, probably over the last twelve months, say to me, "Oh, you know, would you would you be really excited for a six inch mask toy line?" I'm like, well, no, because it would just be the figures and mm -hmm. yep. yeah, what's yeah. the point? As, as, as exciting as a name is, you know, Brad Turner is as a name. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the, I I want the Con yeah, I want the Thunderhawk. Yeah. I want Condor. I want the Jackhammer. Yeah. Yes. I'm not too concerned about Miles um, Mayhem, you know, with a fat dude in a suit with some medals. <laughs> <laughs> Six inches tall on your shelf. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, yeah. look at the look at the Black Series speeder, but the speeder of uh, Snow Speeder, how big it was. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. It's the and size that's of a pizza box. And that's one of the smaller Star Wars vehicles, you know, as far as flying vehicles. I can't imagine one of these as a six inch scale fig, uh, vehicle. It just, I don't think oh. it would work. It'd be too expensive. Yeah. You know what I, mean, I, I think? Would... Uh, go yeah, ahead. Go ahead. ahead. No, no, you go. I think it's a small step from this size figure to a GI Joe figure. So I, I agree. see that happen. And when you look at the range of GI Joe vehicles and the, all the mechanics that go into that, I can see that happen. And uh, it's not that I'm waiting for it. But I think it's more a question of when instead of if that this is going to happen. This is bound to happen. I think Hasbro is going to be the one uh, who's going to bring out G.I. Joe size mask figures with uh, vehicles, uh, with prices. We're probably not going to like that much. And <laughs> if it does, don't pin me down on it. But I think I'm just going to stick with the vintage. But... I think I think we can see this happen in a foreseeable future within a year or two, three. We might see this happen. It, it 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 it's very possible. I'm I'm really not sure. I I I envision Hasbro kind of bringing out the toy, and yes, you'll be able to like take take the firecracker for example. Mm. You'll be able to change it from you know, the, the basic vehicle mode into the armor, but it won't be a spring-loaded push button with all this engineering. Oh, no. um, yeah. There'll, be, there'll be, be something, yeah. it'll be like, like um, unplug one base and plug a new base in and now mm. all of a sudden it's elevated. And yeah. So yeah, it'll get value, like that. value engineered out. Yeah. And I, and I can see them doing vehicles like the Condor, the Thunderhawk. I can't see them doing things like... Um, the Rhino, uh, for example, or I mean, they ain't going to do Boulder Hill. Let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, or yeah, yeah, or the Switchblade. Yeah. Can you imagine? The, can you imagine the Switchblade as an actual drone that you fly around and they can, you know, with the mini servos they have these days, you can transform it a little bit. And oh, that would be cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think from the technology standpoint, I mean, look how amazing these guys are for the engineering that they had back then. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine incorporating the engineering that's and the capabilities nowadays into something like this, even at this scale or the GI Joe scale and getting, getting the capabilities that we have today is with drone technology, with um, the servo things that we have lately, you know, like the new, the new transformers that are coming out that are fully automated and in their transformations and capable with your smartphone. And I, mm -hmm. math seems like that would could be really cool doing something like that if it's done right. Yeah, that's it. If it's done right. If it's done right, if it's yeah. if it's beholden to the history of it. Hey, look oh. at that, <laughs> Kitty Kaiju. It's Mad Cat, <laughs> which, which, which probably means that uh, if if Hasbro ever did do it, you know they would put someone in charge who doesn't even know. They, they'll probably put someone in charge who was born in 1991 and doesn't even know. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. How do you spell yeah. that again? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What does math stand for again? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a big fan. Yeah. I don't I don't hold out much hope in that regard. I it, it it's one of those things where it's like, oh yeah, that was a Kenner property, which means Hasbro owns it. Shit. Right. Damn it. <laughs> does Hasbro own it actually? Because I'm not hundred percent sure that they do have the mask license. Do they? Yep. Okay. They? Yeah. yeah, yeah. They 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 pretty much acquired any Anything from from Kenner that was um, Ken, Kenner's own IP. Mm. Um, they didn't necessarily hang on to. Kenner may have had a license in the the eighties, um, owned by 
I was going to say Star Wars as an example, but obviously Hasbro still owns that as well. But, mm. you know, Kenner and, um, uh, sorry, Mask is a Kenner IP, much like mm. G.I. Joe is owned by by Hasbro. So, yeah, they, they, they do have Hasbro own kind of everything. No, I, I was under the impression for the last 10 years that they also still owned Action Force, but... Oh. They don't. Thank God they don't. <laughs> uh, Master Sun 42, thank you very much for the super chat. He says, if you were mask characters, who would you be? No need no needed to think. I half already figured it out. Sly Rax, Miles Mayhem, Alex Sector, and Ash Gorey. So who's who? Oh. I'm the musician, Brad Turner. Brad Turner. <laughs> Even though I can't drive a motorbike. Floyd Malloy. Because he's got that cool blonde hair sticking up. I know he's a bad <laughs> I mean, it's so cool because they designed his mask open top, so his hair yeah, still. Yeah. Oh yeah. He's my I, I I gotta I gotta come clean. I, I am new to the mask line. I never collected it when I was a kid, and I never really liked it when I was a kid. I didn't know much about it actually. So these two vehicles I have were gifts from these fellers and Jody and um so I'm just starting to kind of get familiar with it. Um, but I, and I'm just starting watching the TV series. I never watched it when I was younger. Um, I kind of <laughs> like, I kind of like T-Bob. What? <laughs> I, I love the design. I love the design and the capabilities of T-Bob. The That's character is neat as hell, but I mean, I love the design <laughs> of it. <laughs> Look, if, you, if you're going to be T-Bob, I'll be Scott. Um, oh, no. <laughs> you're going to be. You can ride me. <laughs> uh, Joseph says, who let these three guys on analog toys? Right. Um, <laughs> Joseph, I, I had no choice. Gracie said, if you don't get these three guys on all together, um, she'll unsubscribe from my channel. So, I actually, I I actually don't think my wife has even subscribed to my channel, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, I do like I do like uh, Cliff Dagger and Jackhammer is pretty damn cool. But anything with the motorcycles, Condor, I'm I'm all about anything with motorcycles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, Con I need to get Condor next is the next figure I want to get. Cool. Well, Condor was the only toy I ever remember having in childhood. Condor and Brad Turner, and mm -hmm. I actually don't think it was ever like bought for me. It was a toy that I think I I swapped with a friend in the street. It's so cool. Uh, I might have had it for a few months and then I had to swap it back. But um, it was one of those toy lines I always wanted to have in childhood. You know, but you know, limited selection, you've got to pick and choose. I was probably choosing Action Force or Rambo in, instead mm -hmm. of Mask. Um, but the way I got into collecting this line sounds very much like the way you got into collecting this line, Jeff. Yeah. Because it all started for me <laughs> when Chris Miua sent me um, a Thunderhawk. <clears throat> like Centurions for you too. It was, it was Schaefer sending you stuff. Are you? I'm, I'm I'm trying to think what came first with that. Like I'd always planned, kind of once I had built out most of C uh, Wave One of Mask, that Centurions would be the next line. Yeah. Um, and I can't remember because roughly around the same time that Schaefer sent me. Yeah, yeah. Sch Schaefer's was first. Um, he sent me, I think he sent me Jake Rockwell. Ah. Um, but then nice. Reclaimers as Vintage Toys got a, a whole heap of oh, yeah, I remember that. yeah, he got in the groove there where it was just like, yeah. hey, 100% complete, you know, yep. Ah, Schaefer, there you go. <laughs> there, that's it. I, I yeah. knew it was something like that, yeah, yeah. Anything to do with the motorcycles, Piranha, I, I just love, um, Condor. I'm all about, I'm all about anything with motorcycles, especially with motorcycles with sidecar. Adventure people. Mm. I just know, got that. G.I. Joe, you know, other adventure people, you know, anything with a <laughs> anything with a motorcycle, I'm I'm in. Yeah, nice. Still you so, want to be T Bob. I know. <laughs> you can ride him like a motorcycle. <laughs> and so he's got wrong. funny jokes. Yeah, right? He's got funny jokes. <laughs> no, he doesn't. A bit more <laughs> like a moped than a motorcycle, maybe. I got respect for the Vespas, the, the Vespas, okay. except for the except for the Vespas in in uh, Boba Fett series. Um, it's like a Boba Fett. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> so, uh, Scuba, how, what kind of when, when did you start collecting vintage mask again? 
it was <laughs> so it, when, the, when these were well no i never had it as a kid so they were popping out in 85 so i was knee deep in gi joe i mean that was all my allowance you know uh, any kind of gifts it was all joe all the time but uh this mask was probably a, two years ago mostly out of peer pressure out of, you know like again chris <laughs> Um, yep. you know, threatening me. Uh, and then like he, he starts talking about it. Right. And so now, uh, it's, a, it's a little more forefront of my brain when I'm toy hunting and now I'm starting to see a lot more of it. So it was like yeah. condor, a complete condor, uh, you know, for 20 bucks. And it's like, Oh, that's actually a really good price. I'm like, all right, I'm in. And we all know scuba is the master of the toy hunt. Mm. <laughs> God. <laughs> that's, yeah that's yeah. how i got much the switchblade is from a neighbor a dear friend down the street who was cleaning out his toy collection uh you know his wife's like you no, it must go and he goes i got it all set up in the garage scuba just come on down check it out it's like a private yard sale just for you you know he raised up the garage door and i was like i heard angels oh it was masked and go <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, switchblade. I think it was twenty five dollars. I'm like, oh. I was like, dude, that's that's way too cheap for the condition it's in. He's like, nope, everything must go. And I'm like, okay. I've I've been seeing a I've been seeing them more and more in stores. The little bit of uh, hunting that I've been doing and in the last year, and you know, like Chris, the condor box, the boxes and stuff you guys have there is really cool to see. Hmm. Thank you. That's because the houses in the Netherlands are built out of mask boxes. Yeah. <laughs> That's where they all went. It seems true, like it between story, Boonzart, right? Between true Chris, story. Judy, and Boone's art. Right. Yeah. I'm, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> um, uh, Land Toys. Thank you very much for the super chat. It says, Hey, guys. Uh, glad to see you all. I always love masks, but I only had three of them. Uh, Gator and Condor and Firecracker. I'm slowly re rebuilding now. Nice. I've got Gator here. Gator's a, a really fun little mask vehicle. Um, I don't remember playing with this as a kid. This came from Reclaimers Vintage Toys. Mm. This is a, a really cool little vehicle, and I'm I'm pretty sure I was. Uh, it was one that I, I particularly enjoyed in the in the cartoon as well. So yeah, it's cool. just, it's so solid. Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. And the fact that it switches, you know, pops out of a boat. I mean, what's cool? Yeah. I, 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 I was going to press the button, but I'm worried it's going to hit the camera and knock it over. And, <laughs> and, then, and then stuff at Jeff's and start knocking off the table right. because you do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You got a minute before the video starts. Let's just destroy everything. <laughs> yeah, um, that's cool. The engineering on these things is so amazing. Yeah, it uh, is. Definitely. It is. And, if, and the you, if you've ever taken yeah. kind of one of the bigger vehicles and you've stripped it down to clean it and maybe redo the chrome, oh. you need to take photos, step-by-step -step photos of taking it apart. Because obviously once when you do the chrome, um, if you use the you know the chrome pen technique, which I've done on a number of these vehicles, you have to let that cure for like two weeks. You can't touch the chrome. Yep. Two weeks, I don't know about you guys, but I'm you know in my mid-40s now. I can't remember I, yesterday. Yeah. Exactly. So if I don't take a series of photos, when I go to try and rebuild these things, man, they they are complex machines, complex yeah. devices, and um, yeah, I, I need my own set of instructions, which is to me a, a series of photos on the phone of taking it all apart. Yeah. The, the one of the ones, one of the figures, vehicles I'd like to get. Um, I'm a big uh, open wheel racing fan, and I'd like to get Goliath because it's got mm. the car. Cool. And mm -hmm. but man, I I, I want to buy it ready to go complete because I don't I don't mind restoring some vehicles like the Joe stuff and things like that here and there. And I, I'm not very good. I'm not you know Pete's level or a Joseph's level or or you know any of the other guys. But I can't imagine trying to restore one of these things. Well, what what one of one of the last toys I was able to acquire from Series One is one that you know every time I was looking around I, I couldn't find. I could find nice ones on eBay and stuff, but not perfect. And it's one of the toys in the line. I was like, I don't want to even attempt yeah. restoring that. <clears throat> um, and then, of course, yeah, Joseph 
does an incredible job of restoring this toy. The game's uh, amazing. Yeah. Wow. This, it's a beaut. It's, Look at that. It has this style. He's done this. Not only has he repaired the the blades, like where they connect, he's actually made them stronger than what they were before. So, That's amazing. Yeah. This is um a beautiful example of this toy. So, uh Joseph, Michael Schaefer, thank you. Yeah, that's really cool. Those two as a uh, acquisition and repair team are dangerous. <laughs> yeah, actually, um, yeah, Joseph, is, <laughs> I think I've got another Centurion on the way from the combination of those two guys. So Nice. Awesome. Yeah. So, Chris, when did you start collecting mass toys? Collecting. Uh, so that doesn't mean when I started got them because I got them in my childhood in the eighties, uh, yeah. obviously did, living did in, you, yeah. did you retain any of your childhood originals, uh, for mask? No, oh, so unfortunately yeah. not. Unfortunately yeah. not. No. Um, in the Netherlands, we get things later than they come out in the States. So I think it should have been 86, 87, late 86, mm -hmm. early 87. We saw them come in the Netherlands. Uh, the first one I got was Condor. And I got a Thunderhawk and Scott and T-Bob. And I've been, yeah, collecting them after that. Sometimes I sold examples of toys that weren't in good condition to get a better one. And yep. so that my, my collection upgraded slowly from the 80s until where I am now. So I'm, I never stopped collecting, getting my hands on these toys. And, wh and where does... Where, look, you're a big Masters of the Universe guy. Do you like Transformers? Where does where does Mask rank for you, Chris? Number one, number yeah. one, <laughs> still number one. Yeah, isn't that yeah. awesome? That's so cool. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 the underdog of the '80s, and it's 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 slowly creeping in that top five we talked about earlier. You know, the mm -hmm. big ones. Yeah, your Star Wars, your G.I. Joe, your Masters of the Universe, your Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, your Transformers. I think those are the big five from, you know, late 70s to early 90s and, and you know, spreading within the 80s. Yeah. And I yeah. think Mask has always been a bit of an underdog, um, but it's getting now more yeah. more known to the, to the public. And it's like, like the guys just mentioned, you see them pop up more in stores and hear more people about it. so there's a lot of love for this beautiful toy line which is absolutely yeah. my favorite i think there's a real appreciation for the engineering behind them these days it's really come along as we get older and and mm -hmm. and notice those kind of things mm -hmm. and so like i said i'm new to it and i've i actually spent this morning going back in and watching a couple of the episodes and yes they're a kid's show from the 80s but they still fun they're still fun and the animation's amazing. You know, it's, it's that, okay. it's that Joe style slight um, anime sort of st style to it, but they, they do well and they hold up to, to some degree. And so I think there's a big appreciation that's starting to happen for them. And I never get tired of the theme song ever. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, Chris, you, Chris, you, you said that. Chris, you've said that that's your favorite theme song of any, anything from the eighties. Uh, yeah, and a close second is Will Warriors. I think those two, and both oh, uh, yeah. theme songs are made by Shuki Levy and Haim Saban, uh, who also did uh, Inspector Gadget, He Man, that did the Power Rangers. They did a ton of, you know, oh, yeah. intro songs in the 80s, 90s. A Mask is definitely my favorite. I think what appeals to a lot of people uh, as far as Mask is concerned, Mask, well, you know, He Man was on a different planet. Star Wars was in the galaxy far, far away. Transformers yeah, yeah. was a bit robots transforming. Is that really going to happen? But Mask played at the moment we watched it in the 80s. This was going on. These are real cars. These are people mm -hmm. like you and me. You know, they don't have yeah. superpowers. They got the masks on. Yeah. And th this stuff was actually plausible in my brain as a kid from, hey, this could really happen. You know, when I see that Manta, uh, that Nissan 300 ZX, that's the car that Glory, uh, that Vanessa drives. It's awesome. You think oh, that's a real thing. Yeah. 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 And it's funny because it's like you're saying that, Chris, because and bringing it kind of back to the modern stuff, I feel like, you know, with a lot of the comics these days, they've started melding these intellectual properties together. So there's Mask, ROM, um, 
some of the GI Joe stuff and they're starting to, you know, this shared universe that everyone's doing and they're starting to kind of take all these slightly second tier things and put them in that are, you know, earth based and putting them into this, this shared universe storyline. Um, I sent Chris a ton of the IGN comics recently. Um, and there's a ton of crossover between that and transformers and GI Joe and ROM, uh, space Knight and, a couple other, I think there's one or two other ones, but yeah, they're all starting to kind of have this shared thing. And I could actually see yep. them trying to make that into a shared universe, even at a movie level, eventually. Ooh, I don't, they, I don't they, hope they so. were talking about it a number of years ago. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Has, Hasbro Studios was talking about mm. their own version of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which was going to be G.I. Joe, Mask, Transformers, kind of all, all, all yeah. just one, one universe. So would it yeah. be good? Well, I mean, look at this right here. <laughs> this is a carded Matt Tracker G.I. Joe. From yep. and what year was this put out? Was this that a convention year? exclusive or I don't I think it was. This was two thousand eight. Hmm. And yep. so yeah, this this is a you know a specialist tracker. And on the back he's got his own bio card. It's Matt Tracker. Yep. And so it's it's all part of that shared universe thing. There you go. Show it up close. Yeah. Bio card, Matt bio Tracker. Card. <laughs> so it's it's and then you've got the mask mobile armored strike command up top as part of the branding so you know they're starting to to borrow a, a conicon Ooh. reference and ghostbusters they're trying they're trying to cross the streams on that <laughs> <laughs> nicely done <laughs> hey, 80s cartoon acronyms were really good at teaching kids to spell like i wonder how many <laughs> grew up what was venom Okay. <laughs> yeah, what was Venom? Mayhem. Vicious Venom. Evil Network of Mayhem. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> Such a grasp. It's awesome. <laughs> well, the, the, the only one for me that tops Venom is Savage from Rambo and the Force oh. of Freedom. Oh, yeah. Which was... God, what was that? Um, Secret so Army of Vengeance, Evil, and Global Extortion. Or something. <laughs> yeah. Very every, every, word, every evil word you can think of is put in there. Right. <laughs> when, when I look at, you know, the classic toy lines of the 80s, to me, Star Wars, as, as awesome as that toy line is, it's got such deep roots in the late 1970s and... You know, only okay. It was still around in eighty five. Eighty five. Yep. Yeah, eighty five. But it had, it had really petered out by the end of eighty four. Um, so I, I kind of put Star Wars in a slightly different category, the same as I do Turtles. Yeah. It came out in the late eighties, but it really saw its it 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 didn't grow into its legendary status until we got to the nineties. Mm -hmm. You know, because. Um, Birthday party turtles were amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell Jody. When, Don't tell Jody. <laughs> so when, when we when we just look at the 1980s, the big three, to, in my eyes, are G.I. Joe, Transformers, and Masters of the Universe. Yep. Mm. And I would put in, if you extended that to a top five, Mask would be in that top five for me. Mm. And the other position... You could flip a coin over real Ghostbusters or Centurions. There's a, there's a few toy lines that could kind of be mm. that fifth one. But I just wanted to quickly bring up Jody's thing here because he's saying Transformers, Mask, Darkon. and Starcom. Never heard of Starcom. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just crushing Jody, <laughs> as you say. Yeah, Starcom um, is great. Yeah, was was yeah. Starcom? What company made that? Coleco, and later Coleco? Mattel to took the yeah. brand later and tried to bring it out over in Europe, and it did so much better in Europe than it did in America. Well, the series Starcom, the, the franchise, was focused on you know bringing the youth. Uh, acquainted with what NASA is doing. They, they were mm -hmm. developing the Starcom franchise together with NASA to get the youth enthusiastic for the space program. And yeah. it kind of didn't lift off 
in, in the <laughs> States, unfortunately. <laughs> See what I did there? <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's funny, you know, it's funny the top three, you know, those, I definitely recognize those as the top three of that period. I'm, I'm a little bit older than most of you guys. And it's, it's funny how just that four or five year difference makes, makes, a, ton of, makes a ton of difference mm-hmm. in, in your, your youth experience and what you're emotionally beholden to as a collector these days. Cause for me, it's all about star Wars and GI Joe after about 86, I was in high school and getting out of getting out of toys. And I never really went back until, you know, in the, yep. in the late nineties um, mm-hmm. or the mid nineties when, when the power of the force star Wars stuff came back around and it's funny how that, so this stuff was always a peripheral to me, you know, um, Starhawks and mask and, and a bunch of those were always just, okay. I was aware of them, but I didn't really, I didn't really get into them. It's interesting. The, yeah, there off. was a lot of toy lines in, in the eighties that I never got to play with or enjoy, you know, because your parents only buy you so much stuff Yeah, and you pick and choose your battles. And I was very oh, much, yeah. if there was a toy line that I was into, I always wanted to expand that toy line rather than, you know, r- rather than be a, a kid who had <clears throat> a Peter Venkman figure who could go on a, an adventure with Rambo and He-Man mm-hmm. and have all this different stuff. I, you know, I remember the year I was collecting Rambo. It was, you know, I got a few figures throughout the year for with pocket money. Um, yep. I got a bunch of bunch of figures for my birthday. I got the Defender Jeep and the Strike Cycle for Christmas. I just kept nice. continuing growing that. But then, you know, in in an, in another year, I would then perhaps move on to another toy line. But I was still very, very conscious of toy line because I watched the Mars cartoon a lot. Oh, I wow. really watched it a lot. Um, whereas on the other hand, I, I never really watched the real Ghostbusters, but I still wanted the toys. Mm. But at the time they were coming out in the UK, I was getting, you know, Action Force International Heroes and Rambo and yeah, I like Ghostbusters, but it wasn't up there for for me. So yeah, yep, it wasn't as a mature toy as what you were. At, at least that's how I looked at it. like Joe. That was a bit, you know, that's Army, that's War, that's a yeah. that's a more mature toy. You know, I I left He Man behind because that was more fantasy. I mean, I love He Man. Don't get me wrong, but but the the eleven twelve year old Pete. That's where I started shifting into, you know, I play with GI Joe. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and for the, like when I started getting out of GI Joe's in '86, I was in high school, so I was kind of hiding, still playing with GI <laughs> Joe. Um, and so I never got it. Right? I, yeah, because it's like I didn't want to get ridiculed, and I was a short little fat kid, and so I didn't like He Man because I hated anything with muscle bounds because I got beat up by them a lot, and uh, and so it's like. And not really, but you know what I mean. It's just like I, I and but Thundercats was a big thing for me. Mm-hmm. Um, loved, mm-hmm. loved the 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 designs of the figures and stuff. And but I never really collected those too much. But like I said, I was I was getting out of that stuff at the time. Um, I was always into comics also, and so I was kind of parallel pathing anything I was into with comics, which was GI Joe a lot, and then into Marvel with a lot of the toy lines at the time. And when my toy line stuff dropped off, the comics still continued. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. 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 So so certainly for me, go, going through the, so your experience with teenage, uh, um, sorry, with, with Thundercats, Jeff, you know, it was a cartoon that you enjoyed, but you were at an age where you were kind yes. of stopped playing with toys. You didn't want people at school to know. Yeah. That's what happened to me, with me with, um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I can yep. remember. My first year of high school, being 12, turning 13, coming home and watching the cartoon, but never telling anyone at school that I watched it. <laughs> exactly. Right? Yeah. Like, uh-uh. no. I didn't want the toys. But then I, I can remember only like a year or two later, they brought out the G.I. Joe. You remember the when they brought out the Hall of Fame and they brought the 12-inch back? Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. They were pretty dumb toys. Right. They did like... You know, the articulation wasn't great, but they did Cobra Commander, Snake Eyes, Duke, and Stalker in 12-inch. Yep. Mm. I didn't tell anyone at school that I was buying them and bringing them home. And um, Yeah, isn't that funny how we, yeah. we kind of went through that? That's, a lot of us, I'm sure, have went to that same arc of growing up, growing out of, of toys, and but yet still didn't have a love for them. And 
it's kind of stuck to us to this day. And we, we're now, you know, out and proud now, I guess is what you say. And, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, 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 it's the, it's the kind of the, a lot of the same things that everyone goes through, I think with, with a lot of these toys. And like I said, you know, comics were always a thing for me, but I got out of comics a little bit in college and then back into them out of them. So yeah. And, and that always still drove a lot of my toy decisions later on. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Got a super chat here from Fuller's Figures. Thank you very Connor. much. Yes, Connor. that's Connor Fuller. Um, <laughs> it's a great thing. All these icons from the collector space together chatting this evening. I wouldn't say icon. Pals. <laughs> <laughs> Pals. Th thank thanks very much for saying that. And um, I know we're only kind of like midway through this stream, but I've got to say... I almost feel like this stream for for me is a real ret almost return to form for analog. To I can't remember the last time I did a stream where I've got vintage toys on the table and it's awesome. Um, you know, I, I got emotional during war stories yesterday for a very different reason. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't sleep very well last night. So guys, if, if I switch my camera off, it's because I've started crying. Um, I'm really enjoying myself and we're, and we're halfway through. Good. I just wanted you, to know that the the show well, is going fantastic and thank uh, you God. that's really cool and i gotta tell you if um i have a tendency to blabber too much so if i override you guys tell me to shut the hell up <laughs> we knock something off the table there yeah, and, I, you know, I got something to push here or something yeah <laughs> i can fix that yeah there, there it go. goes <laughs> ah. <Yeah. laughs> Like a cool breeze. Oh, he's back. <laughs> like a cool breeze. <laughs> Summer breeze. Makes you feel fine. So, the next question I wanted to ask you, you guys, is, you know, today, 2022, you're collecting vintage masks. There might be some people in the chat who are considering getting into collecting this particular toy line. Uh, what what would you say are the, the greatest challenges with this line? And perhaps have you got any hints or tips for people um, who are either just starting to collect the line or considering to collect the line? Chris? Yeah. Um, I would say watch some videos and uh, check out uh, Google, you know, and, and, and watch a few cartoons and then go for what you like. And, and this fella right here, yeah, Condor with Brad Turner is a very. It was an entry level toy vehicle uh, with a figure back in the '80s, and it's still yep. very affordable. You see these a lot, so mm. this is a good one too. Hey, hey, that's my job. <laughs> we got a man down. <laughs> so th that's very, very affordable. Uh, this guy, this is from a later series from Mask. This came out a few years later. This is from a racing series, Lester Sludge with Iguana. Also very affordable. I, I have that one. I got that from um, – I don't normally buy the later stuff, mm. but I was buying, like, a couple of items from Matt Swafford, and he had that as well, and it wasn't a lot. And I was like, throw in, throw that in. <laughs> oh, but very I always forget the name of it. Yeah, very Swafford. affordable. If you, want to go for the, if you want to go for the bigger ones like this one, uh, <clears throat> you can buy them incomplete or with a little bit of work, and then it's – reasonably affordable uh, but they come with the parts and the parts are expensive mm -hmm. like the little missile for switchblade yeah. or uh this vehicle right here hurricane i got this from uh, our good friend michael schaefer there's a little tire that goes on the back mm -hmm. and the guns uh i had to search them myself uh, still looking for the little tire that tire is almost as expensive as getting the vehicle without the tire so that's it. It's all the little parts that make it expensive. And sometimes it's wiser to go pay a little bit more extra and get a complete vehicle because you're going to pay the price in the end if you want to get original small parts yep, for yep. your, for so, your, yeah. So Chris, as a, as a, as a new collector for mask, is it like Joe's where there's tons of variations and variants that people want to get, if you want to be a completist or something like that, is there, is there a, a, a lot of that in this line? There is some variation if you're a box collector with a logo. Uh, the logo, uh, don't know if you can see it yeah. over here, yeah. the, uh, you know, with the missile. Uh, you can see the missile exploding. Yeah. Uh, and 
you have some countries where you don't see the missile firing from oh, okay. uh, China, so that's a difference. Uh -huh. uh, uh, and of course, you got the helmets. You got uh, oh, this is a good example of it. Okay. Alex Sector, uh, this is the helmet it came out with first. It's uh, the short helmet. This is the one we got later. Uh, the later one has a hole in the back and is bigger. And that's because, you know, that's as, the, a, as yeah. a kid, you can put things in your mouth and that's a dangerous hazard. So they quickly stepped away from the short helmets into the, you know, the helmets uh, that yeah, you see a lot now. I saw Jody's, Jody's comment on that. That's that I was wondering that because that's huge. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But thank you Jody, for, for the super chat. Yeah. The, um, that, that, that kind of answers two questions. It, it is one of the greatest challenges of the mass toy line is getting the, um, the very early release shorter helmets. Um, and then also answering Jeff's question is that's probably the most significant variation there is with the actual toys themselves. Well, as, as far as I know, I, I'm, um, I'm by no means an expert on mask. I, 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 I tend to do, to grow a lot of knowledge about toy lines when I research and write the scripts for toy yep. histories and things yep. like that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like th what I knew of Ideals Evil Can Evil line before I made that video. That was awesome. was nothing compared to what I know about it now. Um, yep. Yeah. Uh, Bobby L. Collins says, the year is 1985. I had saved up enough allowance money to buy a Condor toy. But I saw a Transformers Prowl on the shelves and bought that instead. I broke it seconds after opening it. Oh. Oh. Regrets. Is Prowl one of the Dinobots? No. The, the Datsun, uh, one of the... You had to... Uh, uh, or is it, oh, no, I'm mixing them up with Blue Streak. Prowl is the police car. The, also a Datsun, oh, yes, uh, yeah, yeah. the police car. And then you had Blue Streak, who was a recolor of Prowl. But, yeah, it's a great toy, uh, Prowl, so I can see why you want to go for it. It looks awesome in car mode, but yeah, it is a bit fragile. Not to say that Mask isn't... It's also a fragile toy line, I think, Mask. You have to be a bit careful nowadays that you don't break or snap, like the, the rotor on, on a switchblade. Uh, if you have an original one that Joseph hasn't upgraded, yeah, <laughs> snap. these can snap yeah. really, you Fun. know, it's only plastic attaching them, you know, so yeah, it, it snaps easy. Is it brittle plastic like early G.I. Joe's, like, you know, stalker's arm or something like that, where it breaks off if you look at it crossly? No, it's, 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 more, no, no. it's a more flexible type of plastic. The problem is when it breaks, it's, it's more of a, a, a PVC type. When it breaks, mm -hmm. it's not something you can glue back together. Uh, um, it's difficult. You know, the front here of this vehicle, uh, yeah. when you transform it, you click these uh, in. Th there are no hinges. It's all you plastic. Cringe. So it, it's, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's hard to watch. It is. It's, it's one of Jody's favorite vehicles, by the way. Uh, Jody? Yeah. yeah. He loves this one. But yeah, I agree with Michael Schaefer in the chat. It, it's it's all so much it's so much more well engineered, and you know, obviously the PVC batches they got to produce this stuff in the molds was superior to most of the stuff that was happening at the time. Well, I mean, when you consider that so many of these, talk, like I've, I've got I've got the jackhammer here as well. I really like the jackhammer. Yeah, oh, that's um, cool. That's cool. Oh, it's the the gun is a very the very gun. difficult. Uh, yeah, I still need that. Oh, I've got him. I got him someplace here. Yep. But every every single one of the certainly the early toys, they came with real rubber tires. Yeah. yeah. Um, Good year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and and I I've got a number of these that have like split along the original uh, join line, um, mm -hmm. and I've been able to super glue them back together. If you're ever doing that, there is a special type of glue. Um, it's a, a lock tight. I want to say type five ten. Um, I use it in my in my day job for actually. Um, if you get a really unusual size sized O ring, you get an O ring uh, oh, cool. spice kit where you make your own O ring. So I, I've got yeah. a, a kit kit out in the shed of all different diameters of O ring, mm. and then you know you can measure the size, bring it together, and it glues it really really well. Um, so there's a a special glue I'd nice. recommend. But when you compare this to, say, because tra Transformers, similar sort of era, 
lots of rubber tires. I think the transformer ones have dry rotted far quicker. I I don't have any of these where the tires have completely dry rotted. Um, mm -hmm. I do every few months um, give the the rubber a bit of a spray yeah. with armor. Right. Yeah, that's a good tip. Oh, keep it supple. Yeah, 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 so yeah. supple. Keep it out of sunlight. All those usual. Was that an yeah, actual sure. co-branding with Goodyear, Goodyear for the tires? Because I was looking at um, the yeah. chat. Um, yeah, it is. The, Michael Schaefer says the fire firecracker tire size is on them. That's so yep. cool. That's that's the level of detail. I mean, mm -hmm. the the Thunderhawk. It's a relatively small vehicle. Things got seat belts, man. Yeah, the Geo Vamp didn't even have seat no. belts. Yeah, and I mean, maybe it didn't need it, but... this is we're, we're talking about. You know, modern day collecting. <laughs> Careful when you're out hunting in the wild because you know you, you you find one for what you think is a good price, but it's literally missing everything. But then you you suddenly realize, well, I need the tires, so you get that one, and then you get this one, you know, for like fifteen bucks because it's got the gullwing door and the chrome's in great shape, but it has no tires. I mean, no. <laughs> it, it has no ball. It's a I'm finding myself in a mask rabbit hole, you know, created by <laughs> relatively affordable prices. But it's oh, like I've good. got two jackhammers. It's like I need to make them into one good jackhammer. <laughs> so do you guys consider the mask stuff fairly kind of affordable still? Or and, and obviously it's shooting up. You know, like like I do adventure people, yeah. and these guys are still fairly affordable. Oh, they're great price. Well, you they're get into the, the oddball, uh, was it Wave 3? In the racing stuff, Boulder Hill place. Well, not even well. Boulder Hill's up there just because yeah. it's Boulder Hill. Yeah. <laughs> but a lot yeah, of that. I, I think there are there is there are certain toys within the lot. You know, like like Condor. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. That are still you know relatively easy to acquire, mm -hmm. easy to acquire in good condition. Yeah. Um, yeah. But then take take the the Thunderhawk for example. It's got two little gray bombs that's supposed oh. to sit underneath. Mm. Gonna and make me cry. <laughs> literally, if, if if you if you want to get a Thunderhawk with the original bombs or without the original bombs, you are cutting the price of that toy in half. Indeed. Um, possibly yeah. even a little bit more. So I found you know an industrial eBay seller. I believe mm -hmm. he was in the Netherlands as well, actually, was selling 3D printed bombs for the Thunderhawk. Mm -hmm. Because the originals were just grey plastic. Yeah, there's nothing. Really you know, all that awesome about them. I don't. Yep. I don't want to pay like eighty, ninety dollars per bomb, and you need two of them. Screw that. <laughs> when yeah. I can get the three yeah. D printed ones for five bucks, you know. Yep. So, yeah, that's yeah. where uh, you know this current technology boom. Uh, it, yeah. it, it's making cool things like this affordable. Joseph. Yeah. Joseph. Yeah. yeah. Joseph. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's yeah, that's this, cool. this episode of Analog Toys is proudly brought to you by <laughs> Joseph. I was just say, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, your model making 3D printing needs. Joseph's getting a lot of new orders after this. <laughs> uh, Jody says here, uh, little details. They even have holes where you can plug in the gas hoses from Boulder Hill. Yep. Um, on the gator Very here, true. it's yeah. On the gator here, it's down on the side. Um, yeah, the, the the black hoses on the gas pumps on Boulder Hill were exactly. I, I, I see people selling Boulder Hills on, on eBay, and it's oh, it's even got the black hoses, and they get all excited. I was like, it's the same hoses that come with all the GI Joe figures, yeah, yeah. yeah. the weapons in the backpacks. Like, it's really not hard to get that hose. Yeah, but yeah. maybe I think people who only collect masks and don't collect GI Joe think that those hoses are quite rare or something. Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean, my, my first ever Hasbro <laughs> action force figure yeah. um, was, was was barbecue, and he had that black uh -huh. hose that connected yeah. and the hose. Um, his firefighting tanks on his back to his little uh, to his pistol. So, yeah, yeah. it's it's funny because I mean, so in my day job, I'm a designer and web web designer and all that kind of stuff, and worked in the creative environment for 25 years, and you can tell when a product is produced that is thought out, detailed, and has support from management to do the right thing when they do it. And that detail and that little process of actually putting that stuff together and the creative process it takes to, to come up with that storyline 
and the and that engineering behind it, it just sp- speaks volumes about how something comes about. And mm-hmm. to see that, we don't see that very often anymore. And that level of detail it just speaks volumes to me. Yeah, it it, it really reminds me of um, if you've ever studied the motor pool bay of the original GI Joe headquarters. Yep. And how oh, yeah. it, it's designed that you can, um, if you put the polar battle bear in there, yes. the, the, there's a there's a real recess specifically designed for the wheels mm-hmm. of that toy. Oh, the wheels, the exactly. The yep. van. There yep. are posts to hold the legs of the <laughs> Howl laser. It's it, a line. It, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was able to accommodate all this different stuff. And, you know, Mask was, was very much that, that way. So yeah. the only only thing about mask and particularly that first wave is that um oh my god uh, uh, the rhino is too big to drive out of boulder hill that's the only thing is it really (laughs) yeah 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 it's too it's too big but but then again if they made it big enough you know the toy the toy would just be way too big so what the hell happened to Mask in season two with the racing series stuff? I I, I hear that knocking stuff over. <laughs> yeah, I see it. Disparaged. Here we go. Careful, careful, don't talk. Um, I see it disparaged a fair amount. Um, some people, ha- you know, some people really like it, and some people just don't. I mean, what? Yeah. What caused that change, and and what did that do to the toy lines? Yeah, they did sixty-five episodes in season one, where you get you know Mask as we most of us love it and then the mm-hmm. last 10 episodes that was season two was the racing series and they went a different way um yeah it's not really my favorite some episodes in that racing series are good uh, especially the the last one which actually has a, a very good storyline going there but yeah i don't know why they did that i know jody they, it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, he's saying that he's got here. Yeah, very, very much so. Um, keep on collecting. Thank you very hey. much for the super chat. What's up? Um, a, an Australian super chat by the look of it. Um, oh, yeah, they are. It says, uh, Morning, Tony, Chris, Jeff, and Scuba. Um, Luke at Reynolds Reviews influenced, which I, I believe I saw Luke in the chat um, yep. earlier. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, he said, He influenced me. To buy my first mask toy, the Gator, nice. I could be heading down a rabbit hole. Yes, you it are. Is a rabbit hole. Yeah. Um, I, oh, a I'm rabbit so... hole, an addiction. Um, <laughs> hi, my name is Tony. I'm addicted to mask. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Chris <laughs> yeah, right. So I, I have continued for the last year of looking over that precipice into that black hole of that rabbit had went down and Chris is standing behind me, pushing me the whole way. And, right. Um, I just give you a sample and you liked it. And now you I want love more. It. Call I me love your it. dealer. Pusher. Yeah. He's a pusher. It's like, it's like mask get in line behind Battlestar Galactica and Buck Rogers as my next toy line. I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But Reynolds reviews. Uh, Luke is, is one of the persons in the UK that, has such a love for this series uh, and, and did some pretty awesome videos on his channel too. So big shout out yeah, to you has. in the chat. Yeah, yeah, he's awesome. Those yeah. uh, those custom made mask boxes that he's been mm-hmm. featuring, Ooh, I yeah. mean, are just ridiculously cool and they, affordable. They are, yeah, and these are originals that I got here and in my collection, but those are the same and so fresh and the color detail is spot on. And they even one thing that's very expensive to buy. Forget about the vehicles and the boxes. Back in the day, the figures from Mass came as a two pack on a card. Try to buy one of those original on card. That yeah. blows the bank. That's forget about it. Incredible. Yeah. And and Luke shows these recarded ones where you can put your figures back on the card with a bubble, I believe, and Ooh. it looks yeah, just point. as fresh and sharp and so cool. So I might be looking into those in the future <laughs> yeah that's easy so I, I i really think like we 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 touched on it a little bit earlier when we were kind of talking about the the hasbro cinematic universe mm. um we've had some gi joe films um none of which were that good um 
to me, probably the, the best of the bunch was probably Retaliation, but mm-hmm. you know, that's still not the that's not saying much. Saying much. Yeah. Not saying much yeah. <laughs> Transformers have been the movies have been very successful, but your mileage may vary on how, how much you enjoy those films. Yep. Mm-hmm. I to enjoy me, certain parts of those films. Some girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, anyways, anyways, I digress. <laughs> to, to me, if there was one toy property from the 80s that I think would translate brilliantly to live action is Mask. Mm-hmm. Imagine what they could do with the technology today. Like, I, I don't think, like, when they do the Thunderhawk, it shouldn't be the Camaro, you know, they should take something, take something new. Yeah. Um, and I would almost like to see them not do CGI, actually somehow, Yeah. you know, build, yeah. Build them. design vehicles that can transform to a degree. And um, yeah, I, Look, I, it, I think it, that, that would be amazing. It would You're be. exactly right, because if we can have Fast and the Furious 37, oh, I'm like, God. come on. <laughs> <laughs> with this mask, I'm like, yeah. yeah. Obviously, uh, you know, everybody likes a good vehicle movie. It's like, come on. Yeah. Do you think, do you think the public would say though? Oh, that's just another trans. That's just a Transformers knockoff. Mm. Did we say no. that in the '80s? No. No. Uh, the no. public won't say that today. No. Okay. The, the, the I think if it's done right, no. it wouldn't. Yeah. If it's done, you know, if we have vast stretches of uh, Arizona desert to go fight in, like they do in the cartoon. Um, <laughs> Right. We, could just, we could do that. Yeah, build a border hill on the side of a mountain and, and make it an actual set instead of in front yeah. of a green screen, you know, and, yeah. and, and, and and put some 80s soundtracks in the series. That always works. They did that with the last yeah. they did that with the last Transformer movie with Bumblebee, which yeah. I think was the best of the whole Transformer lot. Uh, right. Yeah, um, I, I agree with that. Yeah. I I, yeah, I, 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 I enjoyed Bumblebee. Um that's probably the only Transformers film but I'm admittedly a, I'm not a, everyone knows i'm not a i'm not a, a transformers guy so Me neither. Um, Me let, let's, let's say they did make a mask movie hmm. each each of you give me one piece of fantasy casting so <laughs> pick Whoa. pick whatever character you want and then give me a fantasy casting jeff who oh. who who, oh, would, who would you have i i come back come to me last i gotta think this no, is like no this no, is no. Worse than- this is worse than sum it up in one. Damn uh, it. It is. Miles, Miles Mayhem. Um, oh, God. I know Scuba. Tom Cruise. Uh, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Well, I'm saying you. Who would play Miles Mayhem? Like, back in the day, I, th- I thought Omar Sharif would have been brilliant. Oh, but, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great. Oh. Uh, God, I don't I don't know. I, I, got it. I don't know the characters as well as you guys do. Um, I got to think, but I. I'm trying to think of. Um, you I, you've I, got a really easy cheat here, Jeff, because you you were talking about T Bob earlier because you don't know the yeah. character. So just go, <laughs> well, of course you would put Warwick Davis in. As right, T-Bob. right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. He, he's done all the all the small stuff like that. It's fine. <laughs> um, <laughs> done and dusted. Uh, God, uh, how about uh, Ben Affleck? No, yes, no, I'm just kidding. Scott. <laughs> Ooh. I don't know. I, I, I come back to me. Oh, okay. Tom like Selleck is my, that's Tell awesome. Tell L forty eight says Tom Selleck as Miles Mayhem. Mm. That, Even yeah, at, cool. at the age he's at now, he's yes. probably the right age to be yeah. playing him. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. yeah. If you watch like, Blue uh, now, you watch Blue much now. He looks a lot like that. I, I Chris Pratt as you know Floyd Malloy. Oh wow! Huh? Michael French as Matt Tracker. <laughs> <laughs> I can see it. I can see it. He's, he's got a gold wing car, so he had some practice. Yeah, there. right. Tony, how about you? Well, I was going to say, Chris. He, I know you really like Brad Turner, the musician. Who no, can I, play Brad Turner today? Brad. Oh, Brad I, I had somebody else in mind uh, too, actually. But uh, I would love to see uh, Cara Delevingne as uh, Gloria Baker. I Ooh. think she can uh, do yeah. the accent and, and do it justice. And I would yep. love to see uh, my good friend uh, Sharon Noble, who was the voice actress on the actual mass cartoon of Vanessa Warfield, Gloria Baker, mm-hmm. the mass computer. I would love to see her again as the mass computer 
fulfilling that role and giving that bit of nostalgia. So I, that, that would, would be, be awesome. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Brad Turner. Um, yeah, well, you already said, Chris, uh, Brad, uh, the rock isn't available. So for Brad Turner, I would have to go for, um, ooh, I will come back to that after you've been, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you sly Rex. Yeah. Well, my my fantasy casting would be for for Scott. Um, I'm going to put Zac Efron in there. Oh, because I yeah. don't like Zac Efron, and the wife does. So I want to punish him <laughs> by making him the most ridiculed character in the oh. film. <laughs> you'll, you'll play the twit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My my daughter and wife love Zach Efron. In fact, when we when we went to Salt Lake a few months ago, Salt Lake City, we had to go to the high school where they filmed high school, high school musical, musical just because mm. Zach Efron had been there. <laughs> but it's, and it's like, yeah, okay. That's all right. Your wife has achieved sainthood by letting you come to Joe Fest. So that's okay. She, she can do no go to that high school. She and can you, do you like run right up to that high school and you hug it and you'd be like, oh my God. Second yeah. here. She could do no wrong. Nope. <laughs> I like uh, that. I like that. Shot. Russell Crowe. Yeah. I like Thank that. Oh. Yeah. Miles Mayhem, Russell Crowe. That's that's a good one. That's a good card. Well, yeah, yeah. You, know, I, you know who, who I, I think would be the most difficult for me, fantasy casting wise, is actually Matt Tracker because. Um, you know, he should be voiced by Sal from Two Cents Toys. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he, he is, um, in the cartoon, that character is just perpetually on an overdose of Valium. Uh, mm -hmm. the, way, the way he talks and everything, Matt Tracker. So, um, so well, he I, lets his kids run probably, everywhere. Probably, his, kid, his kid just goes everywhere. He doesn't even care. <laughs> Yeah, it's not his kid. Eh? He's the uncle. It's not a. Oh, okay. It's not. A, he's the uncle. Um, yeah, I found one for uh, Brad. I think uh, okay. at first I was like Tom Cruise, but no, uh, Keanu Reeves. Oh, cut his hair short. You know, yeah. he plays guitar uh, in in some other movies. Yeah. So, uh, he loves. Yep. He's big. I know Keanu is big into motorbikes. He even he is. designed a few himself, I believe. Yep. So. Kiana would be great for that role, and I would also send in a, a video with myself and my guitar to go for that role and probably lose it, but I would go for it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Kiana, definitely. What What about yeah. Miles Mayhem would be uh, Tommy Lee Jones with a big mustache? The big mustache. Mm -hmm. No? Mm -hmm. Ma maybe a few years ago. I think Tommy Lee Jones is getting on a bit now. Yeah, mm -hmm. kind of is, isn't he? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But you, you got to have somebody with some gravitas like that that um, can pull that that over the top but yet serious role off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who would play Cliff Dragon? I was just going to ask that. Yeah. <laughs> Gee, I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. Cliff Dagger. Well, I mean, he looks like S Sloth from the Goonies. The action figure does. <laughs> Do we all um, have him? Do we all have him? There you yeah. go. Yeah. Nice. No, that's Sly Rex uh, you got there. The, the other one, Jeff. Oh, yeah. the other one. Sorry. The one, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> your, other mass, your other mass figure. Yeah. I only you have get two. a 50-50 shot. <laughs> and I got it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. <laughs> Look, I can't write. Mask is all about the vehicles. I know the names of the vehicles, right. the characters, not quite so much. Um, right. Yeah, yeah. That's where yeah. I get a little. I gotta have a cheat sheet, or uh, let me yeah, let me the, look that up online. <laughs> the names of the characters are all superstars: Hondo McLean, Matt Tracker, Miles Hondo. Mayhem, Cliff Dagger. All, all those names are all rock stars. They're all yeah. just this side of porn names. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a thing you can say. Okay. <laughs> look, I, I I completely agree with you, Chris. You know that they are. You know. A a a list movie star names or rock star names, <laughs> except for the one rock star. It's like you've got all these fancy names, and then you've just got Brad Turner. Like, yes, yeah. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> oh yeah, he grew up I've already Cornwall. known fifteen Brad Turners in my life. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I've I've never known a Miles Mayhem in real life or <laughs> Dusty Hayes. Yeah. 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 It, it, Ooh wee. Dusty Hayes. <laughs> Ooh wee. <laughs> so, yeah, do any of you guys have? A holy grail from the mask line, something that you've been after and has mm. eluded you, or Chris? Yeah, and that that differs a bit uh, since the last time I've said Volcano, the big fan on those big tracks with uh, pilot mm -hmm. Jacques Lefleur, Sacre Bleu, Le and a, a, Le a tracker with a different mask. Uh, I kind of because. Uh, Michael Schaefer also had that in his collection and the outlaw with uh, Nash Gorey and Miles Mayhem, the big truck which pops open and a huge gun. Oh yeah, yeah. the big rail gun. That's that is the super weapon of all super weapons. Uh, that which, which one is that? That's uh, the black uh, truck. The snake oil. Truck. Oh, snake oil. Yeah. The logo is awesome. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, yeah. That that would be a grail for me too. But I, I have nowhere to put it. You know, I'm out of space, so, so it's a bit it's a on big a little bit at the moment. Yeah, yeah. So maybe, maybe. You could take all those Motu figures off the cards and then yep. create space. <laughs> yeah, I'm in the process of doing that still way behind, but yeah, <laughs> it's piling up. How about you guys? Uh, uh, you, Pete? Well, you I had it. It's uh, it's Boulder Hill. Mm. But I, at the time uh, that I found it, I was not appreciative of mask. But I have a very good friend of mine who is, and I gave it to him for Christmas. Oh, cool! Yep. And I That's found cool. it for one hundred dollars US. Was it complete? Yes. Wow. Hoses. It was complete, and uh, he has it, and because. Uh, He's like, oh, I still have a lot of my mask stuff at my parents' house, you know, yeah. in the attic, uh, in the loft. And now he is starting to bring that stuff in, which is cool to see because he's like, dude, ever since you gave me that, like, he's got a couple vehicles, to, you know, with it. And he's, he's always bringing more childhood boxes back to his house. Like uh, we said, rabbit hole. Yeah. But yeah. I would love to find another Boulder Hill for me. Yeah, uh, because I love play sets. Love, love play sets. I can't get I enough. Know. We have Star Wars, Joe. It's an amazing play set. Yeah, yeah. big footprint. Eternia. Eternia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh -oh, How about this? Is ah, <laughs> oh, there we go. At least you can visit Boulder Hill. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. How far away is he now? Is he just oh, it's like ten minutes. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, oh, I, I can go visit it. You've been watching some cartoons of Mask this morning, Jeff. Uh, can you pick a holy grail from that? From hey, that vehicle looks pretty cool, or was there something to your fancy there? Well, as as a novice to Mask, I did sit down this morning, and, like I said, watch some videos and did some research, and I got to say, the outlaw thing is mm. really cool. Um, yeah, I, I'm a sucker for as a designer. I'm I'm a sucker for the logos from the '80s. Mm. You know, the Cobra Rattler logo, Sky Striker, um, the GI Joe stuff. Um, you know, snow cat. And I'm starting to notice that in the mask things too. The mask logo, I always thought was really cool um, with the truck on it with the rhino. It is a, it is a very cool. It's logo, really yeah. cool. And that iconic uh, face mask that's always, you know, used when they're, when they're calling yep. them up and stuff. Yep. Um, yeah. But that snake oil thing is so clever and so well done. And so the design style is so reminiscent of eighties design mm. and those yep. colors. It's almost like Miami vice colors to some degree. And oh, yeah. yeah. It's, it's so cool. And, you know, Goliath is kind of like that too, and so those two are really the the, the side pods on the on the race car that says Goliath. Yeah. It's it's really cool. I, I anything that has really great graphic design, I, I'm a sucker for, and <laughs> and those are kind of two of my things. I, I I'd like to wow. get. Wow, that's a those are two good ones. Uh, yeah. How about you, Tony? Um, I'll quickly get to this super chat first. So, um, full full Shatton. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Thank you for the super chat. He says Sly Rex could have been a younger Nicholas Cage. That's cool. That is cool. That is, yeah. yeah. Um, for me, it would be 
it, well, it wouldn't be the the laser command. That's like this um, yeah. infamous unicorn within yeah. Mars. It was, was well, I want to say, very late in the run. Mm -hmm. um, it was a very it was probably the most technologically advanced toy that Kenner made for the line. Um, and today they go for. Do they go for thousands, Chris? Crazy, crazy numbers. And and, and yeah. like you say, it does nothing to me. It doesn't speak to me, that thing. But yeah, yeah, yeah. unicorn. I got to see yeah. one. I got to touch one. It was sold, but it was at a, a local shop. And he was like, you're never, ever going to see another one of these. And he brought it out. And I went, holy crap. Which which one was like, it? What vehicle is it? The Laser, laser Command. Command. Oh. oh, okay. I, I need to look that up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, yeah, a, 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 an infamous piece of uh, like Kenner the... Mark collecting law. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, no, I, I really think my holy grail is probably one that they don't make, and that's the shark. Uh, mm. oh. Jump the shark, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they never made the shark. I know, I know this, but I mean, I think. I think Retro Blasting's got a video of like a, a yeah yeah third party team that did it, and I'm sure I saw someone in the chat earlier say that uh, Ramen Toys, who were the guys who were doing um, the Centurions Centurion, kind of reboot yeah. uh, in toy form, they said that they hit um, that same company is going to do the Mask Shark. Mm. Um, oh, nice! Wow. Yeah. So I'm going to have to look funny. that up afterwards. That That'd was right excellent. at the start of this stream, so I can't remember who it was that said it, but yeah. Mm, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. What, about you? what about you, Chris? Uh, again? Oh, yeah. No, you, you already said that. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> more! I can, more. I, I, I can go. I can go. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what, what about you, Jeff, as someone who you know, only has two of the vehicles? Yeah. If, if you could, you know, forget about the money. If someone said, you know, you've won a prize today, which you haven't won a prize. We're not going to send you Damn it. <laughs> If someone said, you know, you, you've won a prize on this Analog Toys live stream, you can have any mask vehicle you want, pick one, and you'll have a nice uh, mint vintage example of it shipped to you tomorrow. Which one would you pick? Well, I, I like Condor a lot because of the motorcycle aspect. Um, but like Chris said, it's an entry level one. And so if you want to get one with some value to it, I... And some and the complexity stuff and the engineering that are so cool. Um, my growing up, my father was a truck driver, mm -hmm. and he always had a large eighteen wheeled truck. So I absolutely love the Rhino. That's a great piece. Wow. Yeah. yeah so I think I would go with the Rhino. Nice. Mm -hmm. And so I, you know, just because I, I still have a, when we when we drive someplace and we'll, we'll be driving down the interstate, and um, I'll go. Oh, that's a good, that's a good looking truck right there. My wife will be like it's a truck and it's like no look at the lines on it look at the look at the look at the paint job it's like mm. no it's like I, I i just love cool looking trucks so rhino rhino for me might be doing that yeah and i always I, find them but they're always you know like the, the side mirrors are broken off or, right or one of those hard to find stacks is broken off and you're like oh yeah, yeah i agree they're yeah, hard to find I, my, my my rhino came from boonsart for, for those of you mm -hmm. in the chat who doesn't know boonsart it's a very, or certainly within our community, it's become a very well-known mm. uh, eBay seller based yeah. out of the Netherlands. It's um, Chris's next-door neighbor. Yeah, he lives uh, <laughs> over there somewhere. <laughs> In a house built of mask boxes. That's right. And Chris's money. <laughs> over over the years, it's amazing the, the amount of toys I actually acquired from, from Boons. My yeah. Robo Skull came from Boonsart. My oh, Rhino wow. came from Boonsart. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've, I've got a lot of a lot of stuff from that person. But when I was really getting into collecting this, the Rhino was probably because I, I was mainly like focusing on right. I want to complete the first series. Yeah. Um, of toys, the Rhino was like always at the top of my list. Yeah. Because I I do have I never I didn't have it in childhood, but I've got memories of actually playing with it at a friend's house, mm -hmm. and I remember how cool it was with the. Um, you know, the pull-out missile cabin in the back and the missile yeah. was spring-loaded and it's fired yeah. and all that. The little command center right there in the, in the back, yeah. too. It's so yeah. cool. But then, now that I have all of the first series, 
the 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 uh, the the vehicle that has impressed me the most, just from a um, functionality kind of perspective, the firecracker is yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah. this is probably my new favorite vehicle. <laughs> you know, well, it's two vehicles in one. You've got the the bike on the back, um, the spare tire that not only shoots off, but when it shoots off, it spins and blades come out of it. It's deadly. Uh, it's awesome. Well, yeah, the, that sells me too because it's got a motorcycle to it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's yeah. a ninja, ninja style motorcycle. It's just awesome looking. Oh yeah, I might. If, I, really, really good toy. if might you have... guys, if you guys could have one of the vehicles from Mask built to a one-to-one -one scale and actually functional, maybe not to transform completely, but at least drive it or you know steer it the way it's meant to be, which vehicle? Would you have for yourself? Ooh. Switchblade. The Gator. I didn't the Gator. Think about that. I would have the Gator. Hurricane. Hurricane. The fifty-seven. Yeah. Chevy. Oh yeah, that's that's a good one. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Sling, uh, slingshot. The big van. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the big van with the plane inside. The van with the plane inside. With a wing on the back. Yeah. <laughs> it's a uh, Ford Arrow. Ford Arrow Star. Right. <laughs> yeah. I, I, lo I love the fact that. Sorry, Chris, go ahead. No, no, go ahead, mate. I, I'll show it. I was just. I, I love the fact that the hurricane has flames all over it, but yeah. it's right. not called the firecracker. Yeah, <laughs> confuses me so often. <laughs> yeah, and this has. Yeah, you would That's say cool. this would be the firecracker, but the, yeah, the hurricane or night stalker, as it is also called. I do a lot yeah. of interstate driving, so all those guns that would, you know, yeah. be handy dandy, you know, just <laughs> blast your way through. Yeah, my favorite one would be this one. Oh, uh, definitely in that color with those green, uh, yellowish stripes on the side, and the target top on top, and I would play a tape of Duran Duran or Wham or what have you in there, or Van Halen, and just oh, no, pick up my buddy really Michael Schaefer, and together we go to all these awesome <laughs> like Phil and Louis, yeah, <laughs> Louis off the cliff. That's yeah, actually because... more doable than you think it is, though, than a lot of the other ones. That that one you could actually kind of do. I, I, I've been looking at them have you already, really? already, and I know Michael Schaefer. Uh, told me a story once uh, where one of these was parked nearby, and every time he walked by it, and I don't know if it was one. the same. Was it the same color, My, Michael? The reply in the chat, if you. But yeah, this this car just shouts road trip to me, you know, with the right music <laughs> and just boom. There you go. And Mr. Scuba Pete approves, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. It's one of her favorites. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, yeah. And the 57 Chevy one is kind of cool. The flames and stuff like we talked about. Again, my, my, my father had one of those growing up. He's like, I wish we still had that. We could paint it like that. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Those, those, those big old American cars. You, you don't really, you don't, you don't really drive those like a car, do you? It's more like driving a boat down the road. Yeah. <laughs> you just, you just tell it where to go and hopefully it goes there eventually. Um, my first yeah, yeah, it's, it's, if, if you've got a left turn coming up, mm. you need to start turning the steering wheel when you're 300 meters away from the turn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my, my first car as a kid in high school and through college was a 1966 Chevy Nova, and nice. it, it was the kind of car that I wish I would have had the ball on the steering wheel so you could just kind of do this <laughs> the idiot knob. <laughs> yeah. 300 yeah, yeah. Paper says it was maroon not purple uh the doctor that i took care of his property his wife had a 300 zx twin turbo yeah nice. beautiful car that's awesome we, we yeah. love it yeah yeah those those big old american boat boats from the 60s and 70s awesome cars yeah <laughs> absolutely absolutely yeah uh well, look guys we're we're getting very close to the to the 90 minute mark we've got, we've got about five minutes left so I wanted to take the opportunity now to um, – I don't know if I've announced this beyond a Patreon message. Um, I've, I've had a long time planned for the next episode of my Toy History series to be based on the Kenner Mask line. Um, you know, Toy Histories is 
the series that, that really kind of in the early days put analog toys on on the map, so to speak. Yep. Um, even though I'm still a small dot in a very big map, but you know, <laughs> um, that that series is very important to me, and I'm like. I want to collaborate with these three guys on that um, on that video. So they have been patiently waiting for me for months because I keep. I, I'm going to get. To, to, I need to get a script finished so I can send it out so we can start collaborating. So I can't promise you when it's going to happen. You know, I was really hoping to get it done before Iconicon. Um, it may end up being the, the script's done and we kind of. You guys film your bits, and then I kind of I may end up having to finish the edit when I get back because I'm yep. I'm busy or whatever. But um, I wanted the audience to know that um, that's going to be a, a a collaboration video between Analog Toys and Chasing Eighties Toys. Cool. And we may we may even have another one or two guests in there because mm -hmm. of oh, yeah. all the individual collections within my toy collection. The Mars toy line is very much the one that my friends built for me, be it all of you guys are on screen, Michael Schaefer. I mean, J mm -hmm. Jody sent me Boulder Hill for... Right? Oh, you know? really? um, a lot of you yeah. a lot of you got together to send me this. Um, yeah. Chris, uh, am I right in saying when you when you sent me the, the Thunderhawk, you also you sent... The Condor. Condor, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, th this is really a, a, a toy line that that, that, I, that I love, but one that has very much been built by, you know, the friends I've made through this yep. channel. So exactly for me, Tony. Exactly for me too. I'm the weak link on this because I only got I, I don't know much. <laughs> <laughs> you you bring a we'll fresh view. More. You bring such a fresh view to this toy line, Jeff. It's refreshing for all of us. And it's, Chris, it's... Chris, don't try to push me into collecting more masks. Come on. This is how sweet talks you. Yeah, yeah, that's I, how it starts. Falling, but I'm not falling for your crap. <laughs> You'll be on yeah. the what's not app tonight, like mass. Oh, mass God, don't even talk to me about what what. Not. <laughs> oh, and, um, J J Jeff, could, could you do me a small favor? What? Knock stuff over? <laughs> <laughs> oh, almost. No, look, I I really don't feel as though we can do this toy histories episode and not talk about the mask laser command. And since no one else has got it. Can you go and pick it up? Yeah, um, sure, I'll try it. You can cover that part. Okay. Yeah. I'll see what I can sell a comic or so. Yeah, you can just... <laughs> sell another well, comic. I got Ghost Rider number one here I could sell. Yeah, that, so that should do it. Yeah. yeah. Just got that one. Hold, hold that up again, Jeff. I don't think I've ever seen Ghost Rider number one. Whoa. Man. This guy's going in to get graded. Do you, do you mind me asking wow. what sort of price that would be? sell for uh, about fourteen hundred dollars like that or once it's graded that's what i paid for that one wow when it's graded it'll be more what do you think it'll yeah. grade as i think a it'll grade year? i think it'll grade out about a nine four something around there nine maybe a nine six if i'm lucky if i have it yeah. pressed and cleaned beforehand we'll see wow yeah nice yeah Later. See, oh. there you go, Jody. I'll just trade it. Right? Yeah. No exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh man, this yeah. <laughs> this has been a great night, and I want to give a special so shout out to everyone in the chat today. Exactly. I, oh, I've yeah. seen I've seen our friends from the UK. VTR is there. Luke Shabby's is there. there. Uh, Jody has been with us all the time. Shabby, uh, you know, Ron is there. Uh, yep. Daniel, uh, George Aiken, Antonio. Jess. Kieran Ball, yeah. and it goes on and on. And you've been wonderful with your comments. We've been seeing them to the yeah, side. No, we no, haven't no. been able to pop them all on the screen. Time flew by, but and thank you, Tony. Thank you, Pete. Thank you, Jeff. This has yeah, been thanks, a favorite topic of mine. And you know, to be among good friends, chatting in good company in the chat, this is a perfect night, a perfect Saturday night for me. Cheers, guys. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Schaefer, thank you for uh, moderating and everybody's moderating and um, it's really cool. Tony, thank yeah. you for having us. This has been so damn, damn fun. It, it's been my absolute pleasure and I, I really feel like I just want to end the stream there because Chris has said it far oh. better than I, than I ever could. I, I've really, really enjoyed tonight. Guys, please stay. Um, don't turn your cameras off and run away. 
we'll have a chat afterwards. We'll bring Michael Schaefer back in. Um, but yeah, thank you. This has just been an absolute. This has been four friends hanging out, talking toys, and it just yeah. so happened that over 130 people wanted to listen to us talk. Wow. So I think that's awesome. Wow. Yep. Wow. That's amazing. Cool. Okay. Fantastic. Wow, All right, guys. Well, the link to the Chasing Eddies Toys YouTube channel is in the description of this video, and uh, we'll see you again very soon. Bye bye. <laughs>